Today we've been looking at the generation of power from the atom. In particular we've looked at nuclear fission and looked at both controlling the reaction as in a nuclear power station and also the uncontrolled release of energy through nuclear weapons. We looked very closely at both of these. We started with nuclear power. We considered the fission events of uranium-235 and showed that on average there was about 2.4 neutrons per fission. If these neutrons can go on and cause additional fissions, this can allow a chain reaction to build up, although this isn't generally the case because the concentration of uranium-235 is too low. In order to produce fuel for this, so for example fuel for a nuclear power station, we have to use enriched uranium, where the concentration of uranium has gone up from about 0.7% uh, and it's taken right up to about 3.3 to 5% for enriched fuel for power stations. And as I said, this is what the Iranians are currently doing and what they're publicising at the moment. We then saw that in general the neutrons from fission events don't like to cause other fission events because they're travelling too fast. These are the fast neutrons. In general we also have to add an, a moderator, for example graphite, which slows the neutrons down through loss of uh, kinetic energy through collisions. Once this is the case and these neutrons have slowed down, these are thermal neutrons and they can cause fissions. So we've got the fuel, we've got the moderator. We also want to control the reactor and to control the reactor we use what are called control rods which are neutron absorbing material. To make the reactor go faster we take the control rods out so fewer neutrons are absorbed and more fissions can happen. To make the reactor generate less power we lower the control rods further in soaking up more neutrons. Eventually we reach a state when, they, when there aren't enough neutrons to enable the self-sustaining reaction. We also looked at the K parameter. We saw that if the K parameter is less than 1, as it is generally, then the, uh, the reaction doesn't happen, the, the fission reaction. K equals 1 gives us a self-sustaining reaction and K greater than 1 gives us an uncontrolled release of energy. We also briefly looked at the requirements for coolants in the reactors and we saw that there were a variety of coolants including pressurised water, liquid metal, advanced gas cooled reactors using CO2 and boiling water reactors. We showed that the amount of energy available from 1 gram of uranium-235 was something of the order of 23,000 kilowatt hours. Okay, and bear in mind, one 1 bar electric fire uses 1 kilowatt hour of energy per hour. From there we went on and looked at nuclear bombs and we saw that in order to have a nuclear, a nuclear reaction in pure uranium-235 we need to have enough uranium-235 there so that even with even with the fast neutrons fission events happen. This is a critical mass of uranium-235 and in order to make fission happen in bombs what they did originally was they fired two subcritical masses together. We also saw that for the bomb explosion to take place we have to ensure that the uranium is held together for long enough and so that the heat from the, from the fantastic amount of energy released from the fission doesn't just melt the uranium-235 lump. We saw that in the first bomb on Hiroshima, although about 50 kilos of uh, uranium was brought together, only about 700 grams of, of uranium is believed to actually have fissioned. This gave us a yield of about 14,000 tonnes of TNT. Again, this is serious stuff. If you consider we had 14,000 tonnes of TNT, this caused something on the order of 70,000 fatalities and 70,000 injuries. Finally, we looked at the Ultima in weapons, which was the development of the hydrogen bomb, where fusion reactions cause the energy release. We saw, that a we saw that a fusion bomb can be built by combining a fission weapon with some solid fuel based on lithium deuteride and styrofoam to, absorb to ensure the neutrons come in at the right speed. You add an extra source of neutrons, you compress everything together, and you have a fusion explosion, which can yield anything up to millions of tonnes of TNT equivalent. Again, this is really the first, mankind's first use of fusion. It's hoped that in the future as we move forwards we'll also be able to target nuclear fusion for power generation, although this is a very difficult goal. We hope that through thinking about things like magnetic confinement and laser confinement, that maybe within the next 20 to 30 years we'll have fusion power, which would give us a source of almost clean electricity where we could get most of the fuel from seawater.